Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to take you on my wellness journey that started 10 years ago when uh, when I bought a 1919 Grey Dort. I uh, want to take you through the restoration process that uh, we did and uh, from right from the very beginning to the end. And I hope you enjoy this. And anyone that uh, thinks that uh, they need to do something or they have a passion for something, I say go for it. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this. And uh, here we go. As from my uh, the information, the history I uh, had read uh, at the beginning, these are the, I thought you might be interested in seeing the three plants that William Gray and Sons uh, had uh, in the carriage business and building sleighs and also automobile bodies. And they just continued on when they went into the uh, full production of the automobiles or the Grey Dord automobiles. They also continued on making bodies for other companies as well, uh, like Nash and uh, et cetera, uh, Durant. But uh, these are, this is an old picture of, uh, of the factories, and uh, it's kind of interesting to look at. Now, what we have here is some of the marketing tools that they had in the day. And uh, I thought these were kind of interesting. This is an original sign from a dealership uh, in Galetta, Ontario. And uh, it uh, it shows the type of thing that they, they would have hanging as a point of sale outside their uh, garage. Uh, the logo below is uh, one of the, which I love, is uh, own a gray dort, you will like it. That's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, and then the uh, advertisement on the right uh, I think it's just, it tells a story in its its own uh, about a poor girl who's got problems with her tire and uh, she could phone the garage, but also the garage is also an agent for the Grey Dord Automobiles in Sterling, Ontario. I, I think that's, uh, that's just a wonderful, wonderful lad. The Grey Dord Automobile was a great success in Canada and uh, they really loved it out in the West because it it started easily in those awfully cold prairie winters and uh, so uh, that was definitely a benefit so uh, in my job I was traveling across Canada and I I before I bought a car I had decided that the best place to look would be in the West well guess what I found this car just outside of Barrie or Alliston and uh, a place called Rosemount. And uh, this is, these are the pictures. The first time I was introduced to this, this uh, antique uh, Grey Dort touring car. And we'll just look at some photos here that you can see. There's actually uh, mud wasps have, have made their homes in the, in the grill of the rad. There's no glass. There's no reflectors. They're all... Uh, all gone in the um, headlights and the photo on the right gives you an idea that there's no rubber on the on the uh, tires but the car basically was uh, was all there uh, for a restoration the the wood had all fallen off the steering wheel um, and uh, we'll go to the next slide and uh, we'll see some more pictures here now this is a uh, this will give you a good idea as to the condition of the car with uh, these pictures. So uh, top left picture, let's say picture number one, gives you the uh, view of uh, what's left of the upholstery in the front seat, as well as there is glass, believe it or not, in the window. And it's split glass so that you can tilt uh, the, the glass to get air into the car because there was no air conditioning in those days. Um, now, picture number two, which is uh, 
down where you're looking in from the side into the front seat. Uh, you can definitely see there's no wood on the uh, steering wheel and the uh, mechanisms throttle and the timing uh, uh, handles are missing from as well as the horn are all missing from the steering wheel. The dash, which was uh, mahogany veneer, is uh, all the gauges, uh, not that there are many of them, but uh, they were damaged or totally missing. So uh, there's also a, a robe rack uh, or a blanket for the people sitting in the uh, rack uh, on the back of the front seat that you can see. Uh, and that's where someone would hang a blanket if you're a little chilly in the back seat. Picture number three is uh, to the right is a little higher and you get the idea of with the hood open uh, you can actually see the wood is the firewall. It's a wooden firewall uh, which is kind of interesting and uh, that's a vacuum uh, uh, tube there for the fuel system. Uh, the, the last and final picture is of the, of the uh, the canvas roof, which is non-existent. Uh, the wooden bows that actually hold it up, hold the canvas up, were all there and uh, they were not broken. Uh, so a restoration was totally possible without having to get uh, or make new bows for the uh, roof. And those bows would have been made out of ash and uh, steamed and bent to shape. Now in this picture, uh, the boss is definitely uh, with me on this one. I needed support of family um, and there's my wife, Anne. Uh, she's uh, with me to help me make the right decisions and uh, there's nothing better than a second opinion. Um, needless to say, <laughs> uh, she was very supportive to be quite honest, but uh, we were uh, looking this over and as you get a better view here and that's uh, that's kind of where we're at so we'll move on well we made the decision we uh, uh, decided to buy this old dilapidated 1919 car and with uh, yeah I could see the vision of it uh, and me sitting in it and driving it down the road. So my son Jamie and I uh, loaded this up, uh, had it loaded onto a flatbed, and off we were. Well, now we've started the, with a bit of the restoration process. First thing we do is we have to dismantle the whole car and take it apart. We take pictures of everything so that we know where it goes and how to put it back together. That's very, very important because this project took me a while and I did it at my home in Barrie at the time when we were living there and I had parts everywhere. So <laughs> these are the doors uh, and they're very small. Um, they're wood frame with metal over top, sheet metal. The box on top is a brand new uh, battery box that I had fabricated because the other one was uh, totally gone. Now when you compare the cars of today to the cars of yesteryear, I want you to look at the picture on the left and the Maybe you know what that is. That is actually a fuse box or what they called uh, a fuse box. The fuses are not in it. There would have been two fuses that were active and the one on the, the bracket on the left would have been for a spare in case you blew one. Uh, the picture on the right is the roof uh, which is extended out and you can see the wooden bows in the middle and just uh, the terrible state that the actual roof was in but believe it or not there's still material there which is unbelievable considering the age. The first picture gives you a good idea of the 
uh, type of material that was used um, for the canvas roof. And those are all uh, important to keep samples of so that you can, when you are um, upholstering, you get the right product with the right grain and, and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, we were very lucky and fortunate to have uh, samples still available. The second picture, of course, is uh, the same uh, thing, uh, the roof. And the uh, third picture on this uh, screen is of the actual uh, body itself. And we're gradually taking off uh, the, the doors are missing. And we're gradually taking off the metal, uh, which was all screwed on, believe it or not, with Robertson screws. The screw head uh, is square. And you know that this is a Canadian car because in the States, they did not have Robertson screws. So, and these screws were made in Milton, Ontario. So uh, all the screws in this uh, body were all uh, square head uh, screwdriver Robertson screws. This first picture is um, of the back left corner of the car, the driver's side. And uh, that would be the back seat um what's remaining of it uh, the upholstery and uh the bracket sticking out from there on the left uh, held the roof when you put it down and as you can also see uh, the uh, seam that goes down where the metal was joined together for the panel across the back and over the left rear fender um, there's also a toggle there that's completely rusted and all the little uh, tacks are all rusted as well for the upholstery. Second shot is uh, once again of the uh, roof and also the uh, third shot is uh, the uh, inside uh, of the, of the uh, cab. And what that is, is you can see the tacks going down the trim. Uh, that piece of material was actually um, uh, your on the when you open the door that would be uh, just ahead of the door in the pass uh, in the driver's side so uh, those were cardboard covered in uh, in um, in vinyl the first picture is of uh, you can really get a good look at these ash bows and um, they were totally covered in uh, material, but this one, obviously, uh, a lot of it's gone, but it's sort of like a linen that's tacked onto it. And the second picture is of the windshield, uh, the bottom of the windshield. Um, and uh, there would have been rubber hanging down at the bottom, which is totally gone, which makes the seal. And uh, this windshield, as I said earlier, can open and close uh, manually. And uh, the old glass is still in it. And uh, so there's a lot of restoration to do on the metal there, sandblasting, etc. This is a good picture for you folks to look at. This is the body. So it looks like a carriage almost uh, because they were carriage makers, uh, the early automotive uh, manufacturers. The body on this car was, the framework was all wood. It could have been ash, it could have been maple, oak, could have been tulip wood. Um, they, uh, they were able to draw, because this was in Chatham where the manufacturing was done, they were able to draw on uh, the forests in and around the area and uh, Chatham actually had the luxury of, uh, it's one of the most northern air parts uh, of the Carolina forests. So you got a lot of different types of, from walnut to great diversity in trees. Anyways, uh, so this, this is the frame and I had to replace some of this wood and, uh, and re-screw it. Uh, it. It was just rotten. It, it had, uh, dried out and got uh, dry rot in it and uh, but uh, got that done and uh, got it put back together um, 
while we were doing this uh, rebuilding the wooden part the metal was out for sandblasting and also for primer these are the uh, two roof shots again um, we really haven't started uh, doing much with them um, other than uh, I to the right you can see uh, some springs on the floor and I had to go to Ohio to get those remade um, I took down templates of, of the of the seat springs and uh, but they were so old and rusty I had to get new ones and so there was a place in Ohio that made new ones so we drove down and stayed the night and got new ones the next day now, this is a good picture with the body to the right before the metal was taken off and uh, the frame and um, this is just channel frame uh, it's not heavy gauge this was a light car um, that was the class of it this car weighed 2400 pounds um, which is just over a ton but you get a sense of the the shape of the uh, uh, the actual frame itself and had to be all sandblasted and uh, and primed and painted the springs came off they all had to be uh, cleaned as well and we didn't sandblast them because that'll take the the, uh, the tension of them so I wire brushed every one of those things and I got I'll tell you uh, when Ann my wife saw me after a day of doing that um, uh, I was uh, unrecognizable covered in in uh, all the rust that came off them picture on the left shows you the uh, fenders on the floor and uh, they haven't been sent out yet they have been um, um, any dents uh, or any uh, repair work needed to be done was done before we sent them out for sandblasting and uh, epoxy primer uh, the picture on the right I thought was we threw in just uh, because it's uh, kind of interesting these uh, there's two of them here um, and what they are is cone they're part of the clutch system and they're a cone clutch and that the they actually had a leather band around them uh, which made contact with the flywheel and uh, so that was what drove the back wheels uh, this leather band and um, I thought that would be interesting for you to have a look at these are before shots uh, before we got uh, the one on the left is of the brake uh, system in the back there were no brakes in the front and um, these are band brake bands with the old wheel on and uh, the hubcap uh, that you can see uh, this was the shape that it came in the one on the right is of the springs underneath and you can see all the rusted damage uh, on the right hand side of the car as well um, so those are all things that we had to address and repair uh, but it gives you an idea of what I was working with when after I got this home now here's a good picture on the left of that same uh, brake shoes uh, it's been blasted it's been primed and it's been painted and we've also got a, a new wheel on there and we've got some rubber on it as well uh, the wheels I had uh, I found a fellow through the Mennonites actually to make my new wheels um, unfortunately we weren't able to uh, use the originals but uh, he did a fabulous job and uh, so that's a that shows a good picture of the cleanup and and how they came out which is amazing the picture on the right is of the transmission that's been rebuilt and uh, back in the frame and you know that uh, to the right hanging down is the original exhaust and I have it on the car and it works just fine which is pretty cool considering it's over a hundred years old now some of you may know the, uh, the young man on my uh, left hand side there um, 
that's Hal Barton. And uh, he's been a long, lifelong friend. And he played a great part in taking this, dismantling the uh, the old car and sandblasting. He, uh, he, did, he sat for hours sandblasting and uh well and, and then i would i would prime the uh frame and so on as, as we as we progressed uh he helped with the uh putting it back together again as well helped me get the motor back in uh, that motor's been rebuilt we had to re-sleeve it and uh new rings it was seized when we got it and um it was full of mice uh, nests and uh, so anyways, we, uh, we got it and, uh, got it all put in there. And a friend of mine by the name of Trevor Hollingshead was, uh, was integral in, in, uh, he and I, uh, rebuilt the motor. Uh, you can see the flywheel and that, uh, if you remember, I talked to you about the leather cone, uh, clutch. Well, it would go into there and that leather would bind onto the, uh, the lip of the flywheel and uh, because that flywheel's tapered just like the cone clutch um it would uh, it would grab and uh, away you go now this picture uh, shows with the steering wheel on the fat man steering wheel and i'll tell you about that later and uh, the motor's in the wiring's done on the motor um we've got the tires uh, on and um, we've also got the new wheels uh, we've got the springs all attached and on uh, again uh, the brackets on the side both sides are for the running boards uh, so this the transmission in the fuel tanks in at the back so we're starting our rebuild um, after uh, after getting everything uh, cleaned up and uh, rebuilt and painted here's a couple of nice pictures of the engine uh, gives you an idea um, how nicely it turned out after we cleaned it up uh, if you were if you remember the pictures when i bought it uh, you can see all those little brass cups on the top of the engine this was a this is a lycoming engine and they went on to make aircraft and helicopter engines but uh, they started out by building uh, automotive engines and there's these brass cups on there's four of them because this is a four cylinder uh, flat top uh, lycoming engine and those brass uh, cups on the top of the head you would fill those in cold weather with fuel and then you would open them up and the fuel would then go into the uh, into the cylinder and then you'd close them up and that would give you fuel right into the cylinder to uh, start your vehicle in the cold weather if you notice on the carburetor as well there's a, a nickel uh, plated um, I call it a valve but it's not really a valve it's, it's just a, uh, a metal uh, sheath sort of thing that you can open and close uh on the breather of the carburetor so you would close it in the winter and open it in the summer when it's hot and cold uh you would have it closed but that was also innovative because that um breather is goes right around the exhaust or the manifold and that would preheat the fuel in the carburetor which made it a whole lot easier to start which is pretty smart I like this picture. Um, the one on the left really gives you a, a good look at the Fat Boy steering wheel, and uh, it was made by Neville. And what it is is a aftermarket, but it was aftermarket in the day, back in the early 1900s. What made this popular was, uh, and the reason for calling it a Fat Boy was, it was almost like the original tilt steering. It actually slid up and down on the uh, the two rails in the center uh, so that if you're getting into your vehicle you'd have it up and then you'd pull it down when you're ready to drive and then when you're getting out there's a little button that you 
push and up she slides and you can get in and out easily as you can see also the horn buttons in and also I have the throttle and the uh, uh, timing uh, uh, switches not switches but uh, levers that you can uh, set and adjust um, and they're also on the on the steering column there the picture on the right gives you the full length of the uh, the frame without the body on and you can see the fuel tank in the back and the uh, fuel gauge is that round thing in the center um, but it gives you a pretty good uh, understanding of what the how the car looked without the body on as you can also see that it's wider the the frame is wider in the back and narrows as you go to the front the picture on the left uh, shows the crank on the floor yes this car you could crank to start um, but also shows the uh, uh, the springs to uh, on the rods for the uh, clutch and the uh, brakes and uh, without those springs you wouldn't have your pedals come back and so I had to have new springs made um, and we found a place in Toronto that uh, made exactly right replicas, which was kind of fun trying to find that out. And Hal helped me with that, Hal Barton. Yeah. He, and the picture on the right uh, shows the uh, universal where the drive shaft goes in. And um, that is a three speed uh, transmission up uh, left would be reverse and then straight down is first up and across and up is second and third would be straight down from second the uh, you can see the handle of the brake the handbrake also uh, to the right of the gear shift and uh, between the gear shift and the muffler um, the uh, there's lots of grease spots on uh, on this vehicle and uh, we'll show you some of those a little later Now you may think that this is mom and pa clampet, but however, it's not. <laughs> Ann and I, uh, we wanted to make sure that everything was uh, running okay. So uh, all I did was put a couple of garden chairs on and uh, hook up a portable fuel tank. And we got the rad back on and you can see that it has, the rad shell has been primed with the uh, epoxy primer. And uh, so, once we got all those parts available then we can start our our rebuild but first of all we wanted to make sure that uh, the vehicle ran okay and uh, so we'll go on to the next uh, picture here and you'll see uh, uh, how we made out well it started out with great intentions however we didn't get too far uh, there were some glitches with the motor and um, had to do with the timing however uh, we were uh, ready to take on that challenge and um, Hal and I uh, figured it out and we did get the car actually running we didn't drive it anywhere we just had the motor running which believe me was what a thrill for both of us uh, anybody actually anyone that who had uh, had any part to play in, in helping me with this project Well, this picture is uh, the first one that came up is of my brother David and my wife Anne, and uh, we're working actually on the wooden uh, frame before we put the metal back on. And as you can see, part of it's been painted black at the back. Um, we use trim clad mixed with uh, um, black trim clad mixed with a bit of. Uh, thinners and just brush that on and it's uh, to protect the wood uh, the picture on the right is uh, it hasn't been painted as yet but you can see the new wood uh, going across the top as well as uh, there are some ribs as well vertical ribs that are also that had uh, rotted out on the bottom and had to be uh, remade and uh, put on 
Well, we're starting to get someplace here. As you can see, the old uh, metal for the back was totally rusted out on the bottom in the first picture. So we had to fabricate a new one. And uh, my friend John Poole uh, was up to the task. And uh, you can see that he's already started that by uh, forming the back uh, with sheet metal. And uh, the we've put the metal back over the, the wooden frame. Uh, it's all been primed. And uh, in the second picture, you can see the same uh, We've got the uh, splash boards on the bottom and the cowl and the doors. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, here we are. We've got the rad in. We've got the motor hooked up to the rad. Uh, we've got the body back on the frame and uh, we're really coming along uh, pretty well. I've got this in my little shop at the back of the house at, uh, in Barrie and uh, as you can see out the window it's, it's winter and uh, I'm hoping that we'll have this all done for spring. Now this is my uh, uh, wellness journey and part of my wellness journey was to go to Florida in the winter. And, <laughs> and it's good to have some, some really, really good friends because I believe this day was minus 35. And I happened to be down in uh, the Keys in Florida and where it was about 85. And my friends came over. Then they push the car out and it's on its way for paint down to Schaumburg from Barrie. And God bless these fellas. They, uh, they loaded the car up and uh, put it into the trailer and, and took her down. And this is a picture of it leaving my little shop at the back. Wow. Here we are in the paint booth. My good friend Doug Westover is uh, spray painting and he also did all the body work on it as well with regards to um, uh, putting on the, any filler that needed to go on and hours and hours and hours and hours of sanding to get that nice smooth surface which painting it black you'll see if there's any uh, any little dents or any uh, anything that wasn't uh, prep properly you'll see it uh, with that color so I had it I had my uh, car at the right spot because Doug is nothing but a perfectionist look at this shine the mirror finish you can actually see my boots in the picture this is uh, exactly where I want it to be. Um, this is when it really starts to get exciting. Uh, look at the wooden uh, boards in the uh, floorboards, um, the wooden uh, slats under the seats. Um, we're getting so close. Just a beautiful job. Just a beautiful job of, of painting. Well, after Doug had done a fabulous job of, of painting the, uh, the car, it was time to bring it home. And so here we are back home and time to put the fenders on and the body on and attach everything back to the frame. Um, so in these three pictures, you can see that uh, that's what we were doing. With the car all together, now it's time for the upholster and get that all looked after. You can see the wires in the, in the first picture are uh, all hanging there and uh, I had to redo that, uh, rewire it all and uh, 
Uh, also, the floorboards are covered in uh, in vinyl. Um, battle, oh, sorry, it's actually Battleship linoleum. Um, and I've also had nickel plating done on any of the parts, that, uh, the hubcaps, the uh, the dials, uh, the, the polish, the flooring, uh, metal, um, so that it really does look fabulous. Uh, you can see the cutouts now going on for the doors, to cover the doors in the back, and those will be upholstered um, in both shots. We've got door panels on. Way! This is great. The uh, door handle there is all nickel plated and um, it's all been fitted. Uh, the door's been fitted to the body again so that it closes tightly. And um, we've got the uh, panels in for the back seat as well. Uh, I think they look just terrific. Now that that flap that's on the door is actually a storage area. You lift that up and uh, you you can put things in behind it, which would actually go into the door cavity. Look at that. The back seat's done. And the carpet's in, too, for the back seat. Uh, the back seat had carpet. The front did not. And uh, the front seat's been done as well. It's really coming together now. And... Uh, this, there looks like uh, in the second picture as well, the canvas is starting to be uh, put on for the roof. My friend uh, Greg Gisborne and Barry did the upholstering. And uh, as you can see, he really does know what he's uh, doing. He's a, a real perfectionist and professional. There the roof's on, and he's also got the side curtains on. This car didn't have any glass in it at all except for the front windshield. So if you got a rainy day or the weather was not great, you put up your side curtains and uh, they just snapped on and they were canvas. I don't know if you remember back, but uh, when I was looking at the car to buy it, the dash I mentioned was uh, had mahogany veneer on it. And uh, all the gauges were either damaged beyond repair or uh, they were non-existent so i had to it was like a treasure hunt with this car because they don't make parts for them anymore not like the model t's and model a's where you can get aftermarket product so i had to uh, find uh, someone who had something uh, that had had the original uh, gauges that i could use and i found someone in in the, in the u.s in the dakotas so I got my speedometer, I got my cable for the speedometer, and I got a uh, amperage gauge, as well as the switches for the uh, actual turning on the power and the lights. And then uh, there's a little uh, 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 nickel plated that I had to get uh, coated again, uh, which is original uh, of the light over top of the gauges. Um, and, I, and that, is a new uh, dash out of solid mahogany that a friend of mine, uh, John O'Byrne, made. These are uh, more pictures, uh, once again, of uh, the car um, re where we were rebuilding it. Uh, this is uh, actually before it went out for upholstery, but uh, you get a sense of uh, um, what was entailed and, and the difference of how it looks here compared to what it looked like when I when I bought it. It's it's just the night and day. Uh, you can even see the little gas gauge on it. It's, it's been nickel plated as well. So that uh, just those little things against the black, it just looks fabulous. Part of the uh, journey of uh, restoration is knowing where you go to find parts. And uh, once again, they only made, uh, <clears throat> what was it, 23,000 of these cars. And so to find parts for them was pretty near impossible. However, I was able to find a motometer, which goes on the top of the uh, 
rad uh, shroud or the rad cap and also you can see the the um, insignia that goes into the rad itself of the fact that it is gray dort and i thought that was that was like uh, gold to me getting those things and i had them both uh well actually the uh, motor meter on top i had that nickel plated as well as uh, the other parts as well for the car well here's the car all finished side curtains are up so you get an idea what it would be like if you had to drive the car in bad weather you'd have those up and uh, now we've got uh, the gray dort totally finished and uh, ready for the road this will be my first fuel up um, I waited till summer to be able to actually drive the car so uh, here I am with the top down and uh, the fat boy steering wheel is up as you can see and uh, just so uh, I could get in and out um, the the car itself is actually running now and uh, well heck it uh, that's why I have that big smile on my face Here's my buddy, Malcolm McNeil, who has been uh, nothing more than uh, uh, a great friend as well as someone who has helped me put this together for you today. Uh, he's always been there and uh, well, it's, I thought this was a great picture of him sitting on the running board with uh, little dog Lexi. And a uh, picture on the right is uh, Ann and I. Uh, in front of our house um, showing the picture uh, in the fall with the top down and uh, feeling very very good about ourselves with our our uh, project completed well we're getting near the end here and I thought this picture was was pretty good um, we took the old car back to Chatham where where it was built originally and we were in a, a parade in Chatham um, celebrating motor vehicles and what couldn't be more fitting than to have a gray dart uh, representing um, the town or the Maple City as they call it because of the maple trees um, and uh, we were just tickled pink to be there. Well, here we are in front of the Gray Mansion, where my great grandfather lived, Robert Gray, uh, with our old car sitting in front in Chatham, Ontario. This is of a beautiful day and tiny. Where I thought, what better place than to be at that but on Georgian Bay? And uh, I got my new tires on, so they're nice and white, which really stands up, uh, stands out against the black background of the car. She's a beauty. In 2019, we hosted a reunion, and uh, those are all Grey Dort cars. Um, there's a couple of different models and uh, how fitting to see uh, the past with the future um, the old cars with the Tesla um, I thought that was pretty interesting well all good things must come to an end and I'd like to thank everybody for watching this today and thank all my friends who helped out in this project. And what to do next? Well, there's always another, another wellness project. And I keep uh, thinking that 
if it weren't for this, where would I have been? Well, with my friends and the project, uh, I have really become a better person. And thank you all. And I hope you enjoyed it.